Brent Della here again, back with a new 15 minute tips video all about creating good camera animation. Couldn't quite get this one into 10 minutes, but that's okay. And this one is all about creating good camera motion in Cinema 4D, as well as a lot of little tips and different ways to animate cameras and get the results that you want. First, we'll talk about just basic keyframe animation on cameras, how to kind of control them, and after you make the keyframes, what all these damn details down here mean, because there's a lot that goes into it to get what you want. And then we'll also talk about controlling cameras with nulls, a good way to move them around and have a little more control, as well as a little more advanced one of the situation here where we have it using almost all tags to do the animation. So I'll go back to this first little scenario and let's get started. Basically all I have here is a sweep and a little cube that has this little cut in it. So I'll just delete this camera and we'll start from scratch. So to create a camera, what we want to do to get the default camera is we can just grab this icon right here and click camera. And then when we click this little black outline square here, it's going to turn white and that means we're in our camera view. So now if we move around, we're seeing the world through the camera. And the way that we can switch back and forth is if we click that again, you can see that we hop out of the camera. We can see where the camera is as well as if we use our multiple views we can kind of see what's happening so to get started I'm just gonna grab my camera and I'm gonna zero out the rotation so I know that it's looking at this straight on and I can back up with the middle mouse button or the scroll reel and just kind of position this where I want and we'll just do a basic dolly in down here for keyframes I'm gonna turn off scale and parameters because I don't need those and I'm gonna hit a keyframe and then what I can do is I can either just move this into place or if I undo that I can move ahead in the timeline and then just grab it in a different view and push it where I want it and then keyframe again. And if I back up and play it, now we have this camera animating from position A to position B. So again, in our viewport, if we watch that, very simple camera animation just moving in by default it's going to ease into place and we'll talk about that more in a second so now what we can do is we have down here keyframes for position a and then b anywhere in between here we move the camera somewhere else and then turn on a keyframe again it's going to add a third position keyframe and we can see in the top here what it's going to do if i just play this it's going to play from position a to the center keyframe we'll call that b and then to c and it's going to smooth out that curve and ease along the whole way so again i'll just back up grab my camera play and if we watch it in our viewport, by default we get a pretty nice smooth camera. And what we can do to add to that a bit is go to that center keyframe and maybe rotate it so it's looking at this keyframe again. And since we're animating position and rotation, you can see the camera is going to move and rotate at the same time. And now that we have those points, what we could do is grab any of them and move them around so we don't have to update the keyframes. We can just move this path around. We could even do that in our different viewports because it's a path, but it doesn't have to be just a flat plane. It can be in three dimensions, so we can kind of have this be a little twisting path that goes up and down and left and right. It kind of shifted around from our views. Now, as I mentioned, by default, it's going to smooth this out, but that might not be what we want. And if we grab any of these keyframes, we'll get our keyframe information information down here and that's where we can change this. So I'll just grab all of them and what's going to happen is by default it's going to change interpolation to spline and that's the smooth bezier curve. If I turn that off to linear you can see now it's just the points and it's going straight from one to the other. So if I just play this you can see that it kind of hits that wall and that's not going to look smooth so you probably wouldn't want that but if you do want a camera to just stop exactly at a point you'd want to change interpolation now by default because it's trying to do a lot of the work for us what we can do is move these around but we can't change the angle that this curve is going so how we would adjust that is if we click down here in the mini timeline and grab one of the keyframes and then over here on the right, turn off auto tangents and clamp. That's going to give us our little handles and we can further adjust and twist that curve around to still have the same point, but kind of go at a different angle. And if we want to change just one of these sides, we can hold shift and get something very dramatically different on that. So that's not very smooth, but just to point out what we could do, I'll just undo that real quick. And on our keyframes, the last interpolation difference between spline and linear is step. And that would be just if you want to have it only changing views right on that frame, it's going to kind of cut and not animate at all between them. 
So it can be useful if you're just kind of cutting between different camera angles. So I'll just undo those again and kind of get back to where we were. What I mentioned is it's going to default and ease these into place. And to explain that, I'm just gonna change my timeline to only these two keyframes. So I'll just do 50 to 90. So if I grab this first keyframe and look at this from my top view, you can see that there's left time and right time. And what this is doing is easing into and out of this keyframe. So it ends up smooth and calculating this by default. So if I play kind of smoothly goes through that and then eases in at the end. And if I turn this up to say negative 25 instead of negative 10, you can see that it's easing even more when it gets to here and then still smoothly going out. And if I do the opposite of just zero both of these out, you can see that it doesn't slow down through this at all. It really just keeps going quickly through that keyframe until it hits the next one. And what I can do with these is if I break them, I could have different values for how it goes into it and how it goes out. So if I had left time be like negative 10 and right time be something like 50, you can see that it slows down a little and then really slows down after that keyframe before it kind of goes into the next one and smoothly goes out. So you could do a lot of little changes to each keyframe or all of them at once if you wanted to uncheck everything and really hone down the exact camera motion and speed of everything with the eases that you want. And the one thing I mentioned a second ago is if I grab this keyframe, you can see that everything is still on. And the one thing that clamp is doing that's good is it's going to make sure the angle doesn't kind of fly all over the place and tighten that curve up. So if I turn those off, and turn clamp off, you can see that it kind of breaks that little smooth curve and that can be an issue. But if you do have big flowing scenes of camera motion, you might want to turn it off to get more control if it's not giving you what you want. So that's our very straightforward keyframe animation for a camera where we're actually keyframing the position and rotation on the camera to get the movement that we want. And if we make a change to that, we can always just move something rotate it and remember to hit the keyframe icon again and it'll update and reset all of our information for the keyframes and that's one way to do things and can get you the results you want but things can get a little more complicated and if we take a look at this one if we want really nice smooth cinematic camera motion that's mimicking the idea of following dolly tracks and real cinematography it can be a little hard to control everything and there are some other ways to do this so I want to talk about the second situation where there's a couple of keyframes on the position of the camera, but it's connected to a null and the null is doing most of the rotation, which ends up making this look really smooth and nice. Similar situation over here. I just have this box and I dropped it in a cloner to get a bunch of them and I'll just delete this camera and start over. So again, I'll just drop a camera into my scene, hit the box to turn it on on my camera and then on my camera, just position it into place and make sure to zero out all the rotation. So it's looking at this straight on. Now, what I want to do with this is have it orbiting around while it's coming in. And that would be kind of difficult to draw that exact circle with the camera. So what we can do is connect this camera to a null and then animate that. So I'm going to go to create object null. The power of this is that the null is somewhere else from the camera. So over here, we can parent the camera to the null and then on the null, same thing as we did with the camera, animate the position and rotation. So if I add a keyframe to the null, not the camera, and then go ahead 90 frames. So I'll press R to rotate, hold shift and go to 90 for now, and then make another keyframe. And if we play this again, you see that it's perfectly orbiting around, which can be really nice to control this. Now, what we can do is also grab our camera and rather than moving the null, say if we want to have it orbiting in, but dollying in at the same time without losing that perfect 90 degree angle, we can grab our camera and animate only position. So say at the beginning, the camera is here and then 90 frames in, move the camera closer and move it up and then hit another keyframe. Now, if we play the keyframes on our camera are coinciding with what's happening with our nulls. So what we're getting is this really nice mimicking on a crane and it's going exactly at a perfect circle around this and pushing in at that same time. So that could be really difficult to create with just keyframes on the camera, but parenting it to a null can really help a lot of these situations and get really smooth cinematic style camera motion. So if I make this 180 as an example for the time and I can just move both of these keyframes by selecting both objects over to 180. What I can do is on the null, change this rotation from 
90 to say 360, update that keyframe on rotation. And what I'm able to do is control the rotation amount and the position separately. So you can get this really nice, smooth arcing camera motion that follows this object straight up and is continually rotating while going in at the same rate of speed until it gets to the top. So now if we take a look at this third situation, what I have is that same box and it's around a cloner and there's an invisible sphere that it's snapping to. And the idea being, it's just this big thing that we would want to focus on while the camera is moving. So if we take a look at our camera animation, what's happening is the camera's kind of starting on this roller coaster like track, falling down to the right, going below this, and it's looking exactly at it the whole time until it kind of gets up to the top and eases in to stop it. And if we look at our top view in play that we can see that the camera is falling down this track and looking exactly at it the whole time. And this is a little more complicated of a camera move because it's combining where the camera's going beyond just orbiting around one null and pointing in a direction. So, and to do this sort of thing, rather than clunking around with the keyframes and nulls, there's some great tags that you can add to the camera and objects to make this process a lot easier. So I'll just delete my camera again and delete some these other things that I have. And I'll just go over here and then make a new camera, go into it again. And rather than animating the camera, putting it in a null, what I want to do is use the Cinema 4D tag align to spline. And then to get it to look at the camera, we're going to use the target tag. So what I'm going to do first in my top view, grab my spline path as a bezier and just draw quickly the idea of where I want this camera to go. And then I can look at it from my other angles and do things like raise this first one and it really gets us being a three dimensional camera move that starts up here at the top and kind of slowly goes down until it goes over this little dip. And then let's say at the end goes back up and we're looking at it from the top. So rather than pointing the camera through this, what we can do is on the camera, go right click Cinema 4D tag, align the spline, and then drop the spline in there. And it's gonna lock this camera to the spline. And then all we have to do to animate it is if we click on that tag, there's position zero to 100%. And all we need to do is have a keyframe for the beginning. So I'll just command click position and then go to the end of my comp. Shift G if I just wanna shortcut that. Type in 100, command click new keyframe. And if we look at this from our top view, now we have just two keyframes and this is moving along this three dimensional curvy track, which is great. This saves a lot of time, but it's not looking at it and we could rotate it around and do that but that's a little more complicated and it's pointing in three dimensions let's just cut to the chase what there is is there's a separate tag to look exactly at an object so I'm gonna again on the camera right click target and what this is gonna do is give me a target object for the camera, which I can use any of these things. So what I'm gonna do is use this invisible sphere and target it. And now if I play, it's going to always rotate the camera to be looking at exactly this object. So again, this is a very powerful one because this doesn't even have to be a still object. It could be something that's moving and the camera would follow it around just by this target tag. And this target object is an invisible object that happens to be in the center, but it doesn't necessarily have to be something like that. I could just grab that tag and put in like the cloner or that bool object or even like a light and it would always look at that light while it's on this track. So I'll just go to sphere again. And what's great about combining these is we can get these really smooth, nice, orbiting, three-dimensional camera crane results with just two tags and very few keyframes using the target tag as well as the align to spline tag. So one last tip on the tags part, I'll hop back into my original one. And I mentioned this briefly in a different tutorial about 2D images. There's one other tag that I really like to use with cameras. I'll just make a cube real quick. And the other one that I like to use is on any of the object I can use right click look at camera. And what this is going to do is always redirect the front of that object to the camera. And I mentioned this in a different tutorial about 2D images, but it also relates to 3D. I want an object like this, but I don't want it to necessarily be that face of the object looking at the camera. What I can do is I'll undo that and put this cube in a null. So option G and then on the null cinema 4D tag, look at camera and the null is going to, but I could still rotate around the cube or any object. So say if I always wanted the cube to be looking at the camera from this angle, or if like this had like an eyeball on it or something, again, I'll just play. And this last little look at camera tag 
can do some really cool and interesting stuff with you know a big scene of stuff looking right at the camera and stuff shifting around. So there's a lot to cameras and some good ways to control them as I mentioned are just keyframing the camera properties, linking the camera to nulls and animating those, as well as some of these tags like target, align the path, and look at camera. But there's a lot more to cameras and I want to continue to cover those in other little videos such as the properties of virtual and real cameras that are important with what this looks like, such as our focal length, our aperture if we turn on the physical renderer, and use depth of field and mimicking real camera properties beyond just the default 36 millimeter it looks exactly like it did originally and removing the camera around. And in addition to all that stuff, there's also some great presets. If we look under the camera, these not as often used out of the box camera rigs, which I really like if we look at something like target camera, motion camera, and camera crane, we could do things like grab a target camera and mimic that idea of our null. We could do something like a motion camera, which has this funny looking guy that's holding the camera, moving it around. And my personal favorite, this built in camera crane option, which is basically a bunch of nulls connected together that lets you animate the idea of an actual crane with the heading and height and pitch all bending around. So I'll cover those in different tutorials to break up the topics of cameras, but this should get you off the ground and doing some really cool, well done camera motion using some of these techniques. So thanks for watching. Be sure to check out those other camera animation tutorials as well as a lot of my other ones. And be sure to subscribe on Vimeo and YouTube at slash Sean Frangella and Facebook.com slash Vital, V-I-Y-T-A-L-E. And thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video.